Okay, so this is loop flux, and what loop flux really is, is it, at its heart are four loopers uh, that can be controlled in unison or can be can given random uh, randomization controls. So I'm going to go through the, the looper controls real quick. Uh, each one of these colors represents one of the loopers. Uh, the lights indicate whether they're recording or playing at any given time. Next to the lights are mute buttons, so we can mute all of these voices and not hear any of them. Uh, we can have two on. keep all of them on so I don't forget what is playing and what isn't. Uh, on the bottom we have a pitch control. Um, this is unquantized so you know if you're not real familiar with setting pitch via CV in Zoya the thing that I would really keep in mind is that every octave uh, is 0.1 uh, CV. So if I want to raise the pitch of a loop by an octave, I add 0.1 CV, and there are other intervals in there, but um, you know, th those would be the places that I would start. Uh, let's see. So I have some of the loops set to, to plus an octave, some set to, to minus an octave. Then each one also has an individual reverse uh, control. So you can reverse any or all of them. Or none of them. You can set the length the base length of the loops with this control and they can go up to pretty glitchy levels that also work as sort of weird tremolos and sort of rhythmic uh, things. I'm going to turn the, the loop speed down so like I said, they can all be controlled together so that they play in succession. You know, you see them going across in order, right? Um, but you also have this control called variance. And variance sets the amount of the, the range of possible uh, speeds for each individual loop to be determined uh, per loop. Um, so each time it, it it records and plays a loop, it goes back and, and changes its its read and record speed. So now as we play this, we see the lights start uh, not coinciding. Sometimes all of them are recording, sometimes all of them are playing. And the speed, the amount of time that they're recording or playing also varies with each one. And as we push this, we can set our base speed. This will be the, the slowest that they'll possibly record at. And as we push variants higher, they can get shorter and shorter. Some of them will be long, some of them will be short. We set variants back to zero, they all snap back into order. Okay, so those are the, the looper controls. The rest of the controls basically have to do with uh, how you, you hear the loops. 
So at the input, there is a bit crusher and an aliaser. And the reason for those is to add sort of a lo-fi, uh, you know, tape quality. So as we add the big crusher, you might hear a little bit of noise. You can bring the aliaser frequency down. I just switch that over to frequency. Also get kind of extreme with these. And because, well, for a lot of reasons, there's also a, a low pass filter at the output stage. Uh, there are a lot of reasons for that. One is that I, I find that the sped up, pitched up loops can sometimes get kind of grating on the ears. Um, so having a low pass uh, at the output allows you to, to shear off some of the higher frequencies and, and make those a little bit more pleasant to, to my ears so they don't sound quite so much like excruciating bells, but also in conjunction with these controls, they can help you, you know, give it a more worn in feel. And you can get, uh, you know, degradation that, that I think sounds a lot like a, a tape. And to add to that, you have a modulation section. That's this red section right here. Um, the modulation section is turned on with this stop switch. There's a rate and depth. Um, the depth goes to pretty wacky territory if you want it to, or very subtle territory if you keep it real low. I, I wanted the wacky in there because sometimes it, it, it creates some really interesting uh, sounds when everything's just sort of jumping all around and then you have three options for the the shape that are controlled by these two buttons when this button's on it's always a combination of a sine wave and a random wave and they're not they're not multiplied they're added together um, the random amount is controlled by the rate of the sine wave so what happens is something that's not quite like a the multiplication of a ra the random wave and a sine wave, uh, but I don't know how well that's coming through. I can turn up the mod depth, which might not give you the best impression of it because. sort of like a sine wave that, that jumps around and, and has sort of random ranges. Um, so that's one option. You can have a, a straight sine wave. When, when all the buttons are off, you have a... a sine wave. I like this with a pretty low depth and a fast speed, and you get sort of a... Uh, a flutter sound or you know a really slow speed where you get the you know warping and the other option is just random modulation without combination with a sine wave and that happens when you push this button on and with that i definitely want a fast fast rate 